Hey folks, my name is Dave Snyder. Uh, we're back to our sessions on learning how to set up a Linux desktop for development. Uh, last we left, we'd set up a we'd set up a machine with Arch, and then we had installed um, GNOME on top of it. So here we're right back uh, to that screen. Uh, which is just a fresh install. Today we're gonna work on just learning the basics of how a Linux desktop is set up, learn a little bit about how GNOME is set up, and then we're gonna install a couple different um, packages on it, and we're gonna learn how to install software uh, in a Linux environment. This will get a little bit command line-y, but mostly we'll be in the graphical environments a little bit. So, you know, here you are in GNOME, uh, which is, I describe it as, you know, a, a very friendly, polished uh, desktop manager. That's why I, I tend to recommend it uh, for new people. Um, even if you like doing customization, having a nice base there is uh, always something that's super strong. So again, remember we installed Firefox in that original installation procedure. So we've got that there, which... does not have internet. Oh, it does have internet. I just had restore session on there and I was like, what am I looking at? Uh, good old Firefox. Um, anyways, uh, other programs, you know, uh, that come with GNOME are going to be just the, the real basics. And I, I like that it ships with basics because everybody kind of needs a calculator. There's always going to be better calculators, you know, or something like that. You need scientific stuff or, uh, all that kind of stuff. Actually, theirs is pretty nice. Um, there's calendar systems. One nice thing, um, you know, that you have with GNOME is the ability to hook up your internet accounts. So, for example, you know, anytime we come in here, we could come into settings, uh, and then settings will provide us, uh, you know, an area where we can get to all the various things uh, for setting up this desktop. Uh, so one of them, I believe, is, is it accounts, online accounts. And from here, we could start attaching our Google account, you know, any, any different networking accounts that you might have. What's nice about that is just like any other OS, it will, you know, bring in mail if you want it or bring in your calendar systems. I actually use the GNOME calendar. I, I think it's pretty nice. Um, one easy thing that we'll do just to show off, you know, getting this thing set up is... Uh, whoops, let's go ahead and change our background. Um, Gnome ships with a dark mode, uh, which I think is pretty nice. Like it, it is actually really good looking. Um, and you'll notice, notice how Firefox picked that up as well, uh, which is really nice. Um, we can also come in here. One thing you see me like going to this uh, area, that's because I always forget what the key command is for this. And that's because I set it myself. Uh, so coming into settings, we can come down to, there's a keyboard area that's here, uh, and then we can view and customize shortcuts. They're going to have a bunch of predefined ones. So for example, that search is under launchers. Uh, we can just give it a key command. I'm going to give it control and enter, uh, and then I have that available to myself. Uh, one thing that we can also do if we wanted to is we could uh, set the, the web browser. This is going to use whatever the default web browser is being used uh, for the machine. I tend just to kind of show off uh, some of the shortcut uh, abilities and how customizable they can get. You can also tie custom shortcuts. So this might be, um, you know, you want to load up the terminal or something like that, uh, or load up Firefox. You could come in in any anything that you could just type directly in that terminal as a command, right? Anything that's running off of path, um, you could just assign a shortcut to. So I'm going to go and assign the one that I normally assign this to, which is shift, shift control G. This for anybody that's curious comes from my days of using Google Chrome and I, G mnemonically sort of uh, stuck in my head and it's kind of stuck there ever since. So now at this point we can keep hitting, you know, uh, Control Shift G, and that's going to load up a new Firefox for us. Um, we can assign really any set of uh, key commands that we do. So as we start installing software, uh, we're going to start loading this type of stuff up. Um, 
One thing that's, you know, kind of, uh, I think, important to, to go through if this is your first time, you know, learning the Linux system is how uh, file systems work. So maybe you're coming, I find most people who are coming over, well, obviously people are either going to be coming over from Windows or uh, Mac. Um, you know, Mac has a, a somewhat similar system. Uh, Windows these days kind of gets closer. But the basic idea is you as a logged in user, and I'm logged in as Dave, uh, you're going to have a home account, right? And your home accounts for your documents, your downloads, your videos, they, they set up these folders for you. Um, but I think it's always important to know, like, how are applications installed? Where do applications live? Uh, what is the difference between the system files? And then what are the difference between uh, those user files? So if we come in here and we're just going to load up the, the default GNOME terminal here, uh, we can see that it's dropping us in the same place that uh, we're being dropped on here. Uh, I'm going to type in some key commands here. I'm going to assume you know the basics of uh, learning, uh, you know, navigating around with a terminal. I'm going to set up a full tutorial that just goes through that. Um, but for right now, we're just going to type ls, uh, and that's going to show us that yes, we are in the same uh, uh, folder structure here. We can also type pwd. Uh, and that'll tell us where within the entire system that we're actually at. So we're within home Dave. And so if we CD'd or change directory forward slash, that's going to take us all the way to uh, the root of the system. And we can see that there's a bunch of stuff. There's bin, dev, lib, root, sbin, sys, user. And so when we did that PWD before, which told us we were in home Dave, that means that we could come in here to CD home, right? And if we do an ls in here, we'll see that we have our single user Dave. And so all the files uh, that the Dave user has set up are going to live within that area. And then all the system level files are going to sit higher up within the, uh, within the path structure. And um, seeing how that works and, uh, you know, when we went and installed the system, we set up a root user that, uh, you know, had pseudo access and that just means that they can get access and change those system level files which themselves cascade down to any users that might be installed within the system uh, and we can see like where applications get installed you know normally in a mac you'd see something like an applications folder in windows you'd see a program files folder uh, in linux they all get installed uh, in various different places but normally it's going to be in some manner of bin folder uh, down at the system level and we can check that by just saying something like which Firefox and the which command will just tell us like if I use the Firefox command where is that being run from and you can see that that's being run from user bin Firefox we could do the same thing with something like maybe gnome is there a calendar or something calendar how do I spell? Good. <laughs> so user bin gnome calendar, right? And again, any of these uh, any of these applications, you know, we're running them up here, right? We're running the calendar, uh, but they can always be run down here as well. So we can invoke the calendar just by loading it up there, and it's going to load up our calendar. Um, this is important because Almost everything, the reason people really gravitate to uh, Linux systems is because you can do so much by the command line um, and you can really, because of that, you can script things and, uh, you know, run these, you, you can chain them, you can pipe them and get them all working together. And so, yes, you can always load through the launchers, uh, but you're going to find, especially in these tutorials, that we're going to spend a decent amount of time in our terminals. Um, but that's that's just a basic idea. Like that's how the structures work. It's important to understand that stuff so that you know. Hey, you may have um, you know Firefox being installed at the system, but if you're tailoring it, the config files are going to be stored at a user level, and that's going to allow different users on that system to have different config files. Uh, and that's something that's going to be a recurring theme uh, as we mess around with Linux. Now. That really just describes the basics. What we want to start doing, let's do something fun. Um, 
I one reason that I really like GNOME is it has a pretty good extension ecosystem. So if you're using a browser, you may have heard of like, you know, extensions that you're going to run on Firefox or on Chrome. Uh, GNOME runs in that same way, uh, uh, Firefox or Chrome, and then GNOME runs in that same way. Um, and let's, you know, let's engage with some of those. Like the easiest way to see these things is just to type uh, GNOME extensions and we're going to get, uh, you know, uh, this browser thing where it's going to show us like, hey, what are different uh, extensions that we can run? Um, you know, like, for example, I think this open weather one will allow us to see, you know, multiple uh, uh, calendar uh, areas. So if we'd come in here and, you know, I'm in Annapolis, uh, Maryland. Uh, you know, we can now see that here, but what if we wanted like multiple time zones to be shown in here? We could install an extension to do it. Uh, and for me, there's a couple extensions that I really like. Some of them are just beautifying ones. Uh, but then there's a couple that like I kind of can't live without uh, that are uh, what are called tiling window managers. Uh, and that's we'll, we'll kind of show it off to get there. Uh, but the the real basics are Hey, look, you could come in here and if we wanted to install um, that open weather uh, extension, we could, you can use the browser, a browser extension that will automatically install and load these things so that you can do it from the browser. But getting back to that idea of config files and uh, installation stuff, we want to do everything the same way. And the same way that I'm going to prescribe to everybody is, we're going to use uh, Pac-Man and its extended, you know, family of the Arch user repository to download everything. So rather than ever clicking download links or install links within a browser, we're going to do everything through the terminal. And that's going to allow us to script things later on or back things up so that we can just make things like run through one click whenever we need to set up a new system. It's also going to back things up really well for us. Though, you know, if you like user driven environments, you can certainly uh, uh, do uh, this way as well. Uh, one that I always like installing, there's one called, I believe, Blur My Shell. Where is Blur My Shell? Uh, this is a nice beautifying one you can see like it sets a nice background here when we when we get into this mode where ours is really just um uh you know uh has just the gray background one thing that's also important uh gnome does uh support like using multiple desktops in here so we can see now that we've got two separate ones that we can always switch between uh, i'm one of those people who don't use this type of stuff uh, too much. I've got multiple monitors that are running and I always like to see my windows in front of me, but kind of everybody's different. That's the fun part about uh, Linux environments and Linux desktop. So I'm just going to show you the way that I set stuff up, but hopefully that just teaches you skills that you then can go and customize. And getting back to that idea, let's start customizing. Let's install this extension and see how it works. Uh, so like I said before, um, when we followed that last one, there is a program called Pac-Man. And Pac-Man, if we were to come in here and say Pac-Man uh, H, or what is it, Pac-Man help, uh, you're going to see uh, the, uh, uh, the parameters that we could pass to this program. This is a installation program, which will install things for us. So for example, we come in here and say, uh, sudo pacman, watch this, let's remove Firefox. So we have Firefox on here. We're going to say sudo pacman uh, dash r Firefox. And what that's going to do is first it's going to say the generic Linux like uh, thing, which is like, hey, you have sudo access, Dave. Like, please be nice to other users on this system. It's kind of like a very old school thing that they've got here, as if like we were all using these machines uh, in some university lab. Um, but I'm going to type in my password. It's going to say, are you sure you want to remove these packages? We're going to say yes. And it's removed it. So now at this point, if we come in and type Firefox, we no longer have the Firefox uh, application. And so 
This Pac-Man uh, system is going to give us the ability to install and remove any packages that we want. So let's just go ahead and sudo Pac-Man this time. Let, you know, let's bring up that help to look at those options. And so we can we see one that's sync, and sync's going to be the one that we use to actually add a package. So we'd say sudo Pac-Man dash s Firefox. Uh, it's going to say, do you want to install it? We're going to say yes. Uh, and now when we do a which Firefox, we're going to see that it's in user bin Firefox. Uh, more importantly, we're now going to see that it's been installed within here and we can now get to it. So that's really the basics of how using that system is. Uh, all of these things uh, are augmented and made a lot better. The, the main reason that a lot of people like Arch, other than it being a very, very minimal distro, is that there's something called uh, the Arch User Repository, which is essentially a way to install packages beyond just like core standard ones. Firefox is going to be something that's pretty standard. The GNOME calculator is going to be pretty standard. Python is going to be standard. Like these things are things that are monitored uh, and that they're sort of approved and checked. Uh, other things like um, an extension, right? Uh, a GNOME extension or maybe uh, a plugin for OBS Studio. Um, there's all these types of programs. In fact, like you could just make some application, uh, you know, on GitHub and say, this is the way that it needs to compile. You could put it on GitHub, you could output your releases and you could put it up on the AUR or more than likely, if you have a nice program, some community member is going to go and add that for you uh, onto the AUR and they're going to maintain it and they'll keep up to date with it. So we can always come into the AUR and see, hey, what's you know been updated? And there's so many <laughs> different uh, things that get installed into the AUR. It's really where things get like super fantastic, like, um, you know, you need files to unzip things. You're, you're going to find some manner of application, uh, you know, within this uh, system. And what you're going to find is almost everything like, you know, 7-zip, for example, uh, is in here. Uh, you're going to find that almost everything, I mean, not almost, like pretty much everything, uh, you are always going to be able to install through the AUR. Now, Pac-Man doesn't have access to all of it. By default, Pac-Man uh, just has access to like those very, the, the cream of the crop, the major stuff that's out there. To get access to everything, like the GNOME extensions that we need, uh, we're going to need to install another package manager. Now, I know you're kind of laughing at me and you're like, I barely understand what a package manager is. What do I need another one for? Um, and so just think of, we're going to install this one called Yay, which I think is called Yet Another Yogurt. We're getting again into Linux having stupid names for things. But I just like to think of it as like, Yay, I'm installing something. Uh, so Yay, uh, think of it as a superset of Pac-Man. It uses kind of Pac-Man's internals, uh, but it gives us access to the entire community of these repositories. Uh, it's super safe everybody's been using it for years and years and years uh, and so all that we need to do is actually install yay and then we're going to be able to use it so uh, to get that done we're going to need to make sure that we have uh, some dependencies so base devel i know was installed when we went through it but i'd be surprised if git is actually installed on this machine yet so let's do a witch git to see if it is and you're seeing that we're getting an error. It says that there's no get in any of our path areas. Uh, path is an area, uh, it's basically any of the folders where we're allowed to run files uh, from a command line uh, sense. So we need to install get. So how do we do that? Well, it's kind of showing us uh, we would use pacman again because uh, that's what we have. And so now we say sudo pacman s. Remember, we're syncing it. And we're going to say get. And so we'll say proceed with the installation. And hopefully when this part is done, uh, we can say which get. And you can see it's in user bin. It's right alongside our buddy Firefox, right? Uh, so everything's getting installed into that user bin area. 
we now have the ability uh, to build yay. Now, yay is a little bit different. Uh, we have to actually build it. This is the only time that we're gonna build something from a local folder uh, on our machine. Then once we have yay installed, we should be able to just install packages. If you're like a web developer or something like that, you're probably familiar. This is similar to how you'd install something like NPM or Yarn or maybe um, uh, pip, you know, for Python. So we're just going to go through and we, we need to do this first step uh, and then we should be able to move. So let's go ahead, get clone our, uh, our yay folder. This is going to put it in our, hopefully we were in our home, we are. Uh, so we are going to go into yay and then it's given us one more command, which is make package dash S I. So uh, what this is basically going to do is it's going to build the package for us. And the nice part is Linux ships with all the things that we need to do to do all that base development. When well, we went through the installation procedure and installed all this stuff. So now we're going to do that. Uh, we are going to have, uh, it's going to uh, go ahead and build this for us. It's going to end up using um, Pac-Man for it. And you can see it's saying, hey, we need Go because yay is writ in the Go programming language. Uh, so uh, that's the one nice thing is, you know, just like any other package manager, you may be coming from a Mac, you know, something like Brew. If it depends on something else, it's also going to go through and make that installation as well. Uh, so uh, it's going to run through here and build stuff out. So now that it's got Go, it can say, OK, we're going to install yay as well. Uh, and now we should have access to yay. So let's go back to our home directory. Uh, if you ever need to get to your home directory, you don't know where you are, you just use the tilde key, uh, and then you can see that we're in there. We now, if we say which yay, uh, we should have it installed, and as you can see, it's now in user bin yay. At this point, I know that I just taught you a bunch about Pac-Man. We never need to use it again. Uh, so because we installed yay and it is a superset of Pac-Man, uh, we can now use that anytime that we ever see the Pac-Man commands. And in fact, it uses the same exact uh, uh, parameters on it. So when we were saying Pac-Man dash S, we we're now going to say yay dash S uh, when we install stuff. And to show that off, we're going to, we're, we're just going to do the normal thing that we've now done a couple times. Uh, which is we're going to come through and let's uh, uh, let's remove Firefox. So we did yay dash r Firefox. Uh, we can remove these packages. We're going to say yes. We're now going to come in here and Firefox is gone. Uh, we will then come back in and say yay dash s Firefox. Uh, and we can now install Firefox and Give it a second. It normally takes just a second to show up. Now we have Firefox again. So great. We've learned a little bit about package managers. You now understand how things get installed. Uh, we're also going to do a which Firefox just to show that yay is putting it in the same spot. User bin Firefox. This is how you're going to add and remove programs, right? And I know that you have to learn a little bit of syntax here, but it's awesome because it's extremely fast. Look how fast it is. Imagine not needing to go to Google, searching up like, where's that download? Downloading the thing, <laughs> going to your like downloads folder, clicking a button, going through like next, next, next. Do you want to install like some C++ distributable, right? Um, it's super, super nice. And I think, you know, when I get excited about Linux, I, it's really a lot of that type of stuff. It's the fact that when we loaded up GNOME, there was no like, hey, would you like to sign up for iCloud? Would you like to, you know, uh, is it okay if we track you? Like it's, it shows up bare. It makes everything, once you learn just a little bit about it, it makes everything easy and then we can extend it to what we want. So getting back to that theme, let's go ahead. And we talked about uh, getting Blur My Shell. So to find uh, Blur My Shell, we're going to do AUR uh, Blur My Shell uh, in Google. And we can see that the extension is on the AUR, which is here, uh, the GNOME shell extension um, you know, is available. 
And so what all that we need to do, you see this package base, we just take that name. And so we're going to copy it. And now we can say yay dash s blur my shell. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to go to this package, right? And so this package just lives on GitHub and it lives in releases. So you can see we're at version 44 uh, that's here. Uh, we are going to, uh, it's whenever it asks these questions within any of these package installers, it says things like diffs. It's like, do you want to see the diffs of what changed? Uh, you can always just hit enter to get the default. So it's going to say none. Um, then it's going to go through, do the install for us and it's done. Now at this point we're like, okay, is that extension in there? Like how would we even see if it worked? We don't see the, uh, you know, the, the background changing the way that we saw it in that screenshot, like what gives. Uh, Gnome has extensions, an extension area where you can manage this type of stuff. So when we come through it, we can see, okay, what are the applications that are installed in here? So for example, we could add a menu here for applications if we wanted, right? Uh, these are the ones that come built into Gnome. Uh, you know, native window placement, Place status, add a menu for quickly navigating places in the system. Interesting. Um, so uh, th there's all these different things, you know, that you could add to it. And, and that's the great part. When we're talking about Linux, the great part is like, you just start with this base, you start adding stuff onto it. Uh, and by the end of it, yours is going to look completely different from mine, even if we're using GNOME. Um, now, where's that Blur My Show one? If we come in here and search, I don't see blur my show. So the reason is, is anytime you install extensions within GNOME, GNOME needs to reboot itself uh, within it. I can't remember if it needs a reboot or a logout. We're going to try a logout first, uh, just because that uh, probably won't need us to get out of it. My guess is it needs a reboot, but it's good to just show like how this stuff works. You can just say logout, pick logout, uh, tell it to log out itself, and then it's going to come right back for us. We're going to log back in and still no background, right? Uh, but let's see if the extension now shows up uh, within that area. There's blur my shell. So you're going to need to occasionally uh, in uh, specifically in GNOME, sometimes you need to like reset it uh, to, to get access to those extensions. It's pretty rare. You're not going to install extensions too often, but we can now turn on blur my shell and let's see if we get the payoff. Great. Uh, hopefully <laughs> this shows up, but it's just like a little nicety, right? Like we can now see the background, uh, that's loaded up in there. Then when we come here, we can also see a little bit of uh, blur that's, uh, showing up here as well. Uh, so everything's working the way that I would expect it to. Uh, from this point, we can then go and install other extensions. Um, I think I'll leave that maybe for the next video. We're, we're closing up here on 30 minutes. Um, but we now understand how to install packages. Uh, we've installed the, the yet another yogurt or the yay system so that we have access to the Arch user repository. And again, just as a reminder, like anything that you want to install, like OBS Studio on the R, you, we can install directly that or through Pac-Man. What's really nice is sometimes you'll see them with dash git on the end. That means that we can install like the latest and greatest, like even before something's been released. Um, anyways, when we're going to come back for the next video, I think what we're going to do is install some other extensions. We're going to install the uh, GNOME pop shell extension, and that's made by the folks at System MD. That's going to teach us a little bit about Windows managers, and we're going to get like really fancy window management um, that you're going to love probably as a developer. Anyways, hopefully you've been enjoying these series. Again, I'm Dave. Uh, it's nice going on this journey with you all. I'll see you in the next video.